Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Lynn Wilson and I'm glad you're joining me today for Hope for Today. And today we're gonna take a little walk. Come for a walk with me. So we're gonna go on a virtual walk together. The sun is out today, it's a beautiful day and we need some fresh air. You ever go for a walk and you just say, I gotta go for a walk, I gotta clear my head. I need exercise. It's good for your heart, it extends your life. You burn off calories, um, lowers your blood sugar, boosts your energy. What else does it, it improves your mood. Um, when you're stressed out and you come home, I know sometimes, you know, you come home from work, at least for me, and I'm like, there's the noise in the house. The TV's going, the dog is barking, kids are talking, husband's talking, and I'm just like on overload. I'm on sensory overload, let's just say. And I'll say, you know what? I got to go for a walk. I need to go where if the only noise I hear are the birds chirping or, or just, you know, me walking through puddles or, or hearing little pebbles roll on the ground as you walk. It's a peaceful kind of a noise. It's in nature. It's natural. It's, it's okay. And sometimes we just need to go and relieve that stress that we've been under for the day and just regroup, get refreshed and Maybe talk to yourself, you know, maybe you're talking to the Lord, maybe you're talking to yourself. Sometimes you have to talk things out loud to sort of just release them. You ever do that? Just go for a walk and get that fresh air, regroup, reorganize your brain. So, you know, I was talking to a friend today and, and uh, all these smart watches are, that are out there and, and it can tell you how many steps you've taken and help you with your health and things like that. And we have something that's a physical thing that we can wear to monitor what we're doing and how we are. It can warn you, hey, by the way, your heart rate's not good or something along that line. And the same thing is when we go for a walk physically outside, we go for a walk at the gym, we do laps in on something or we get on a treadmill, we're walking off calories, we're walking off stress, we're walking off a burden. Um, we're trying to improve and enhance our mood. I've had many people say that, um, I have a girlfriend that, Every day she walks six miles on the treadmill, every single day. And she said once in a while life takes over and you know she got busy, she couldn't go, she had to leave the house early. And she said, whenever I don't walk on the treadmill, my husband at the end of the day will say, did you not get a chance to walk today? And she said, he always knows because my mood is different. And it's just interesting to me that that physical exercise, that physical exertion of our body you, you would think that it's, you know, you're, you're sweating or you're, you're putting your body through something. But by doing that, you're actually improving your health. You're improving your mental state of mind. You're improving your physical being. You're extending your life because all of that is actually enhancing your body. You know, years ago, before I can remember, but in my dad's time, he said, we didn't have cars. We lived in the city. And you had to go to the grocery store. You walked to the grocery store. You went to school. You walked to school. You went to church. You walked to church. To go from point A to point B, they just walked. They were much healthier, more fit. They weren't having the issues that we have these days. Now that we have these modern conveniences, we hop in the car to go half a block from our house. I'll just hop in. I'll just take the car. You know, people take buses and trains and planes and all these different other avenues of methods of transportation, but we don't tend to walk anymore. And I think back in the day when you had to walk, it allowed you, without you even realizing it, to just clear your head of stuff. Now we leave the stress, we get in the car, we flip on the radio or, you know, listen to some kind of music or something or whatever you're listening to, even the news, and you got that going in here, the hum of the tires, and then there's the traffic and the people cutting you off and just the traffic signs and all that, it just adds more to the stress, where if we had just gone for a walk, it probably would have been a whole lot better. I've been going through some verses for myself, and I want you to know that when I do these podcasts and I talk to you, don't think that I got it all together because I don't. I can only share my experience with you. I can share verses that God has laid on my heart. And there are times where I'll sit just like yesterday. I was sitting and I, I had a podcast all in mind and I was all excited. And I had actually three lined up in a row that I thought these would be great. And they will be when the Lord wants me to share them. 
But just even yesterday, I was struggling with something and it carried over into today and I was getting myself in a tizzy and, and yesterday I said, okay, Lord, I don't even know what you want me to speak on, but you've got a message that somebody needs to hear. And the verses that I used, one in particular kept coming back at me today and I was kind of in a, a turmoil in my mind and my stomach was just, I was all upset about something and I had to keep going back and reading this verse. Now, and that works, so it's not like I can sit and pray and, you know, do all that kind of meditation. It's just not the appropriate time, but I can repeat a verse over and over to help clear the head and in a sense, go for a walk. So let's walk through the scripture together. In Deuteronomy 31.8, and it says, and this is the verse I had to keep reading over and over and over today to sort of lessen the stress. I figured the more I read scripture, the more it enters my, my whole being and my soul and my mind, it'll lighten where I'm at. So the Lord himself goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. I had to say that to myself probably 25 times this morning. The Lord has already gone before me. What I'm all upset about, what I'm worried about and I'm fretting about, the Lord's already gone before me. It says he will be with you. So he's going to be with me through everything I'm going through. He's not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. It tells me don't be afraid and don't be discouraged. I don't know where you find yourself today. Have you been just wandering around and you're just feeling afraid? You're feeling discouraged. Life is uncertain. I had someone tell me last night, she said, I was so encouraged after talking to you. She said, because everybody else I'm talking to are like preppers and they're, and they're just panicking. The end of the world is coming. This is it. Listen, none of us know when the end of the world is coming. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. He has told us to watch for him. He's told us to look out for certain things. He did not tell us to do that and panic and to buy out the entire grocery store and to sell everything we own and to sit on a hilltop and wait for him. The Lord did not tell us that. The Lord did say, I've already gone before you in Deuteronomy, but there's a verse in John that says, he's already gone to prepare a place for us and he will come again. And he will collect all of us together and we will go to eternity with him for those that have accepted the Lord as their personal savior. But the Lord just said, listen, I, more of a comfort, I believe. Hey, I will be coming back. And these are the signs to look for. Be encouraged when you see these things. Know that I'm coming. As a Christian, though, we need not to fret. We need not to worry. We, not, we need to regroup and, yes, prepare like you would for anything else, but not be so concerned that we're just driving ourselves crazy. I hear more and more Christians that are ready to give up and they just can't cope with things. We need to stop this. We are to be the example, the light, and the salt to this entire world. If they see us panicking, what kind of hope do we have that we can't even share with them because we're a mess. We don't need to be a mess. In Micah 6, 8, he has told you, oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? What does he require of us? To do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. To love kindness. I have challenged myself for the month of November, and I know where I'm a little late in getting started, but hey, that's okay. 25 blessings for November and 25 blessings for December. Now, I have to do a little extra work because November, we're you know about halfway through. But I've challenged myself, and I've challenged the others that I've talked to, that I want to do 25 good deeds for November and December. 25 things that'll put a smile on someone's face. 25 things that would bless somebody else. 25 things that will, you know, if I did 25 things this month and you did 25 things, that's 50 things. That's 50 lives that we've impacted, 50 lives we've invested in. Whether it's, you know, you've heard before, leave the quarter in the cart so somebody doesn't have to find a quarter. Pay for the coffee for the person in front of you. Do these kind of things. It doesn't have to cost money. You can send a text message, an email, make a phone call, send a card, hold the door for somebody coming out of the store and just say, hey, happy Thanksgiving. I have been doing that more and more. And people forget that 
November includes Thanksgiving. And, you know, Thanksgiving will look a little different for some this year with restrictions and size of groups and family can't travel and all that. So there's a lot of people feeling lonely and hurt. To hold the door and just wish somebody a happy Thanksgiving could put a smile on somebody's face. And I'm challenging people. It says to love kindness, to be kind. Do 25 acts of kindness for this month and 25 for next month. And tell people what you're doing. Maybe you can get more people involved. You know, we as Christians are here for a purpose. It ultimately is to share the love of Jesus Christ and salvation, the message of the gospel message to those around us. But acts of kindness can go a whole um, lot further when you just do a small gesture, then you hit them over the head with the biggest black Bible you have and tell them they're dying and going to hell. Just by being kind, you'll catch their attention and then they'll engage more with conversation. It also says to walk humbly with your God. To walk humbly. Don't be hoity-toity. Don't be, you know, hey, Lord, this, this, you know what? This is what I think. To walk humbly with your God. Remember who you're speaking to. You're speaking to the King of Kings. The Lord of all creation. In, in um, Genesis, when it said how the Lord would, uh, in the cool of the evening, walk with Adam. Adam had to run the whole earth. I mean, he was in charge of the whole earth. He had to name the animals and do all the things that he needed to do. I'm sure he had a lot on his plate. And at the end of the day, the Lord would walk with him in the cool of the evening and they walked together. Can you imagine being in the presence of God in such a way that you've walked with him. I just, I think that would be the, the most awesomest thing that I can even imagine. I'm also reminded every day in Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. I have this verse on my computer at work. I have it on my computer at home. I have it on a bulletin board at home. I have it by my sink at home. I have this verse all over my house because I can't remember it. Not that I can't quote it, be still and know that I am God. I can tell you, you're having a hard time, be still and know that he is still God. I can tell you and comfort you. Can I absorb that? Can I remember to be still and know that he's still in control? Can I be still and know that he's gone before me? Can I be still and know that he's got this? Can Lynn be still and know that it's going to be okay? If I am walking in the will of God, I'm doing what he needs me to do. He will be taking care of my needs. A few weeks ago, I was talking with someone and, and you know, you just start chatting and, you know, how you doing? How you doing? And we we're sharing some struggles that we're having and, and uh, just both commenting on different things. And we were both saying we're struggling with our prayer life. And I said, you know, I can read scripture sometimes and, and um, there's just times, though, that just talking to the Lord, like I can read his word, but then taking the time to actually pray with him. It's one thing I can pray for others. Oh, Lord, you know, someone says not well, pray for them. And Lord, someone says struggling with this, pray for them. But for me to just sit and just chat with the Lord about how my day is and how I'm doing. How's Lynn doing? How's Lynn's heart? What is Lynn struggling with? What do I know that I'm struggling with that I already know what the Bible tells me to do and I haven't released it to him and do what he told me to do? And you know what I'm talking about. We we're both talking about just how prayer life is really tough. And um, I told her, sometimes I feel so empty and I'm afraid, I'm fearful, I'm hopeless, and my mind is very distracted. I, I just cannot focus on praying to the Lord. I start praying and I'm over here and I pray and I'm over there and I pray and I'm over there. I cannot focus on what I need to focus. She said she was struggling with the same thing until she felt the Lord gave her something. And she said the thought came to her that when I pray, I take a walk with God. I said, what? She says, when I pray, I take a walk with God. And she said, when I started to realize that it would be like Adam in the cool of the evening and the Lord walked with him. And how the Lord walked with the disciples, that he is there with me. I might not physically can touch him, see his face or hold his hand. But I've said before in podcasts, the longer you study his word, the longer that you have prayed, 
the longer that you have spent time alone with the Lord, you sense his presence. I want to go back to that verse again in Deuteronomy. The Lord himself goes before you. He will be with you. When you pray, you go for a walk with the Lord. And I thought, she just sort of gave me an epiphany. I probably have heard that stated one way or another in my life, and it just didn't hit me. But he will be with me. He will never leave me. He will not forsake me. Don't be afraid and don't get discouraged. Again, in Micah, what's required of you is to do justice, do the right thing, to love kindness, be kind to others, show kindness. In showing kindness, we're showing the Lord and to walk humbly with your God. Boy, I'll tell you, when she said to me, in praying during the hard times and praying in the good times, that she just is walking with the Lord. It really just hit me. So today, I, I'm going to ask you, are you walking with the Lord? I know I ugh. one day you can ask me and I'm right on target. And the next day you ask me and I'm kind of like doing this because I'm so embarrassed that, no, I'm not. And I don't even want to. You ever get like that? just don't want to pray today. I don't want to talk to him. I'm, I'm upset about something or I'm annoyed that I feel like he's sending me down this road. And, and you know, the Lord's probably saying, first of all, I didn't send you down that road. You took that road. I know a lot of times in my own life, things I'm frustrated with. And then when I finally decide to sit down and talk to the Lord about it, he's saying, I never told you to go there. The whole time, if you had, if you were still, be still and know that I am God. If you were still and you had listened to me, I told you to go over there. You were so busy in your own stuff, you went over there, and now you got yourself in a pickle. And now we got to clean this up together. Now the Lord will always be there. If I come humbly to him and say, I didn't listen, I messed up, and I need your help, he will help. There might be a little bumps in the road to get through to get you to the other side because of issues you've caused, but he will get you there. How is your prayer life? Are you praying? Are you, you know, just like the daily exercise and we go out there and we walk every day, go exercise. I'm going to get in my two miles today. I'm going to get that fresh air. I'm going to feel my, you know, the blood running through my veins. I'm going to get a good heart rate up. I'm going to lower my blood sugar. I'm going to get myself in a better mood. I want to extend my life. I want to do all the right things. Are you just doing the same thing in your prayer life? Are you walking with God every single day? day. Oof. That, that's a reminder to me. That's a tough reminder for me. When I read the verse, be still and know that I am God. For me personally, and maybe you can relate to this, it tells me, slow it down, Lynn. Slow it down. Why are you running? It says, be still. It doesn't say to run. Be still and know that I am God. Slow it down. I shouldn't be running. I shouldn't be rushing about. I should not be jumping from here to there to here to there, but I need to be still. Like I mentioned, sometimes I find myself on the wrong road and I realized I was supposed to be here, but again, I've gotten myself in the way of what he wanted to teach me. How many times have you used the expression, I'm walking in circles? I'm just walking in circles. I can't concentrate. I'm going here and there. Ooh, time out. If I told the friend that, they might say, okay, time out. Take five minutes, breathe. Whew, okay, let's breathe. Five minutes, we got to breathe. Okay, what's the problem? Well, I wanted to do this, and I have to do this, and over here. Well, okay, slow it down. That would be the next thing we say, slow it down. Let's take one thing at a time. What do we need to do? What's the first thing you need to do? Well, I need to do this. Okay, here's what we can do. Then what do you need to do? I need to do this. Okay, we can do that. Then I need to do this. It's the same thing if you feel like you're running in circles that God said, He's not a God of disorganization. God is a, a God of organized everything. Everything he does is organized. Everything he does has purpose. He, if you're disorganized and you're a mess, it's because of you. That's not because of him. Note to self. So if you're running around in circles, you need to come back and take a walk with God. God, I need to walk. Let's go for a walk. Maybe you physically need to get out of the house or get up from where you are and, and go for a walk. 
Sometimes it's mentally you just go for a walk. You're not in a place where you can physically get up, but you can mentally go for a walk with the Lord, spiritually go for a walk. Lord, I need to, I'm in circles and, okay, here's the five things that's going on. And you lay them out before the Lord. And then you watch him help you organize your brain as to what you need to do. Maybe the first three are already taken care of because he's gone before you. He's already taken care of that. But if you had stopped to ask him because you're too busy to listen, if you stopped to ask him, he would have said, I already took care of those for you. You're worrying about something I've already got. I already got it covered. You're good. So what have we learned today? We've learned that he's with us. He's never going to leave us. He wants us to walk humbly. He doesn't want us to be afraid. He doesn't want us to be discouraged. He wants us to slow it down. Shh. Be still. Be quiet. Shut your mouth. I'm talking to me. Shut up, Lynn. Stop in interrupting. You know how you, somebody's talking? Oh, I'm, and you keep saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Is that a not annoying when people do that to you? And it's like, could I finish my sentence? They keep interrupting me. We do that to the Lord. I can just imagine he's up there going, are you done yet? Are you done? Are you going to sit there this whole time and interrupt me? Or are you going to let me tell you what you've, you've prayed to me? We've gone for a walk and you're waiting for an answer, but you keep interrupting. Again, walk humbly before the Lord, but go for a walk with the Lord. Do you find yourself today not walking with him? Do you find yourself distracted? Do you find yourself on the wrong road? Do you find yourself walking in circles? Maybe we need to both get back in the habit of exercising daily. You and I need to get back on that treadmill. We need to get back on doing some laps. We need to get back on walking around the block and going for a walk with the Lord. Prayer for me, I wrote down four things that it does for me. It changes me from the inside out. All of a sudden, when I start praying, the stress might be there, but my stress level is down. That problem is still there, but I'm not so anxious. That problem is there, but I'm not as afraid. And then I need to also remember along with that, when the stress is down and the anxiety is down and so on, don't take it back. Uh, all right, you give it to him and, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You're grabbing it right back. No. Go back to the armor of God. Put on that full armor of God. Here's another reminder. If you're going to go get up and you're going to go for a walk with the Lord, put on the armor. Know what truth is. We know the Bible is truth. We know his words are truth. And we have to claim that truth. Prayer teaches me to rely on him. He wants us to rely on him. We are living in faith. Our Christian life is a step of faith. In order to walk, it's one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. There's a song about that. Put one foot in front of the other. That's all you can do. But sometimes when you try and walk too fast, you trip up and you're stumbling and you're, you're trying to hold on to things and you're a mess. Slow it down. Prayer for me gives me help in having a better perspective. When I commit things to the Lord, when I pray to the Lord, when I throw it out on the table, I can tell him my fears, my worries, my anxieties. I can tell him everything. I can throw it out there and I get a better perspective. But you know what else it also helps me do? Sometimes I find myself complaining to him and grumbling to him and telling him, you know what's all wrong in my life? But how many times do I take the time and I find when I start praying and I walk with the Lord daily that my perspective changes on thanking him for all the blessings I have and how he's gone before me and all the things that he's provided for me and the, and the things that he's done. And Lord, I went to do this and you already took care of it. I have groceries being delivered to my house today by a friend almost weekly. She has an overabundance of groceries. She's a couponer and has other avenues of and she brings me food. And what am I worried about for my needs? He provides before I can even go to the grocery store. And yet sometimes I'll panic and I think I got to buy stuff. And I go to the grocery store and then she brings me food and I go, I don't believe it. I just bought the same items at the grocery store. I can hear the Lord saying to me, if you had prayed about it first, before you went to the grocery store, I would have laid it on your heart to wait till the end of the week. 
because I was already delivering bags of food to you. How many of us do that? We get in front of the Lord all the time. A better perspective, a healthy perspective on remembering to worship the Lord through our prayer life, to worship the Lord, to thank him, to remember who he is, and to give back to him because he's given so much to us. Also, and the final thing I'll say is my prayer life, when I'm struggling and you go for a walk with the Lord, it just builds a better relationship with him. How many times have you've maybe had it out with somebody and you've had a disagreement and you said, let's go for a walk. And you go for a walk and you just talk through things. And by the time you're done, you're shaking hands, you're hugging or whatever, you know, day, this day and age, you're doing the fist bump and the air high fives and all this kind of stuff, you know. But you've cleared the air when you've gone for a walk. And a lot of times that's what we need to do with the Lord. Just go for a walk. Go for a walk and clear the air and make sure you're okay with him. I want to thank you today for going for this virtual walk with me today. I hope that you find hope in knowing that he's always there. He's here right now as you and I are chatting. He is right here with us every single day, waiting for us to go for a walk with him. Go for a walk with him today. Share your heart with him. Let him know what you're, you're stressing about. But then as you're doing that and you feel your stress level lowering, just remember to thank him. Find something today. It, one thing, if there's nothing else, if your mind's all discombobulated, find one thing that you can thank him for. I'm sure there's got to be one thing. If nothing else, he gave you breath to breathe today. Thank him for that. The sun is out today. It's just another day and his mercies are new every day. Thank you again for coming by. Thanks for going for a walk with me. I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below. Encourage me. We talked about doing acts of kindness. Encourage me by a word of encouragement. Others will read that. They will be encouraged as well. And we will see you next week at the next podcast.